Welcome to Heart Powered Conversations. Today, my guest is Shamoni Higgins. And I'm actually going to read her bio because it is so activating and so beautiful. So I'm going to read it to you instead of giving my, my, shorter, my shorter version of it. Shamuni Higgins is vibrational artist, keynote speaker, and creator of the Heartscaping Methodology. Her mission is to elevate collective consciousness through her creative expression, her voice, and her vibrational artworks. Shamuni seeks to remind individuals of their innate creative power and potential, so they are free to live their purpose with confidence. Shamani's large-scale, elegant, multidimensional artworks hold the highest vibrations and activation codes to help audiences calibrate to the frequency of authenticity and heart-led vision with ease and certainty. And you will be seeing the art we were just describing behind Shamoni when you are watching the, the video. And I think I will include a, a visual of this in the, in, the, in the notes as well so that everyone can see this beautiful piece and receive some of the activation and recalibration that, that we're talking about. So welcome, 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 dear heart, heart guest. I am so excited to have you here. And like with all of my guests, I'd like to ask you, how did the heart find you? Which, which invites you to tell your story of, of finding this path, of finding this way. So how did the heart call you? How did the heart awaken you? Oh, thanks so much for having me. It's such an honor to be here. I'll try and make it a short version because it it's been the last decade of my life kind of awakening to the fact that I had been taught to be very intuitive, but always I always had my mind running the show. And I feel like life since since childhood, it's like life was kind of trying to crack me open so that I could access what was there in my heart and follow it. But I had no idea how to do that. I had no idea how to feel the feelings that come with leading from the heart and following our heart. And so it's not that I was afraid to do it. It's just that I had no idea where to even start. So my journey was very much one of basically completely burning out. And just realizing that even though I ticked a whole bunch of boxes of what I thought I wanted, even though I had people on the outside telling me that I was doing amazing things, I was like, but I'm not, I'm not fulfilled. Like, I don't feel like I feel in the same way that other people feel. I would often look at people around me getting really emotional about things. And I was like, I don't, I don't get how that's a big deal. And when my child was born, I remember feeling something like, during my pregnancy, it's like something opened up and I could feel such an intensity of emotion that I had no tools to navigate. But that wasn't like, that was like, I think just the beginning. And it took me a massive burnout to actually go, actually, I think there's more to life. Like we can really experience more of life if we're willing to, like for myself, I had a lot of grief to move through and and of course, all of the unworthiness that we have as women in the world, all of that stuff. But I think from talking to other people who are very much on this path now, a lot of them found resources and had tools way before I did. Like I was not, it's very spiritual, but I didn't do any of the like fluffy aspects of spirituality. That was never my thing. So how I came to this work and to live life in this way, I think was I completely burnt out. And I tried to piece myself back together with whatever tools I could intuitively find. And there was a lot of teachings out there that really didn't resonate with me. Like I didn't really, it's not that they didn't resonate with me. It's just that they were explaining it in a way that didn't feel in alignment. Like there was something a little bit off. And luckily I found an amazing mentor who taught me well, she taught me, she was able to really see me on a soul level and see who I really was. And she was able to 
guide me to find my own answers instead of looking out for somebody to tell me. And one of the most impactful things that she told me is that the best thing that I can do for you is not give you the answers, but just hold space for you while you figure it out. And I remember feeling that was so frustrating. I was like, but just, I'm here for help. Like, just tell me what to do. Tell me how to feel better. Like, just, yeah. Like, you know, when we're in a very disempowered state and we're just like, just tell me, I will do it, but just tell me what to do. And the whole point is like, that's not helping you. That's creating more of the same. Like you need to go so much deeper and figure out who you are. And yeah, I, the long story is like so many different ups and downs and twirls and <laughs> many tangents in my story. But I think ultimately I wanted more. I feel like, you know, for so many of us, we're like, well, we could do life like everybody else is doing, but surely there's more. And it was just trying to answer that question and what more meant to me and how I could actually be fulfilled and just for me, it wasn't a desire for inner peace. I know that a lot of people just want to be okay. They just want to feel inner peace. For me, it was like, no, I want more than that. Like I, I got to a point where I could find that inner peace and it was like, this is not it. And so, you know, as you were saying, like I've created this methodology called hardscaping. The way I explain that to people is for everyone, it's different, but it's like if you envision your inner world as, you know, really a whole universe inside of you and that often it's cluttered with everybody else's stuff, everything that we've been told, all of the stories, all of our ancestry, there's so much clutter. And our journey individually is to actually kind of sort through it, like go through it and declutter everything that's not ours, everything that we don't choose and we get to create like like you would landscape a garden or a plot of land. Like if you inherited a plot of land, probably be a bit of a mess. And you'd have to, you know, get rid of whatever, whatever's there that you don't want there in the vision of what you want to create for your life. And it requires effort. But it's nothing set in stone. You can create something and then you can pull it down and you can create something else and you can rip it out. But I think there's an, an essential element of looking at what are the belief systems and what are the constructions that are there that work for you or don't? And where are the weeds? Like if you want to grow beautiful flowers, you can't, like you can plant the seeds, but they, they're not going to grow if your garden's covered in weeds and with a toxic soil and, you know, using all of these analogies of nature, it's like we are seeds, but we need to create the right environment to grow and we need to get really intentional about what that that inner landscape ideally means to us. And so heartscaping to me is really that journey of like, well, choosing that, you choose your heart, but then you've got to then you've got to sort through it and you've got to do the work. But the result is that you get to have a life that is beyond what you believe to be possible because you're actually experiencing life rather than just going through the motions. Does that make sense? <laughs> oh, that makes perfect sense. And it's exactly what all every human on this planet needs is to be shaken out of the autopilot and realize that we are here to experience life, to be, to feel, to. And when you were talking about when people were feeling things deeply and you were not 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 quite getting it, not quite experiencing it, I was what I was hearing was, well, yeah, it's like her inner landscape needed that water, her inner, her inner, the hardscaping was calling for that water for the ocean to be, to become that fluid in touch with emotions being that she came here to be and look where you are now. It's incredible. It's just, just incredible. So thank you for doing that work yourself and for saying yes to that developing that methodology and working with everyone you have and allowing that to evolve into where you are now which I think is watching you from from the outside is is watching your courageous heart watching your how you follow the well this is this is where I'm being moved to now so 
that's that's kind of what I wanted to to ask next to move into next of how the art vibrational art came into play because with the hardscaping you got to work with a lot of different different individuals and right it wasn't necessarily always artists it wasn't always the space how did that come to be well you know what is interesting is that it it wasn't necessarily like artists as such but every single person that I've worked with was deeply creative and I feel like the way that I always worked in my mentoring and coaching was to not try and work with everybody, but I would really sit with myself and sit and get really intentional about working with spirit and saying, well, I have a very specific set of skills and they, they're they not for everybody, but if there's someone that I can help, that I have the exact kind of blend of magic that they need to get where they need to go, help me find them and help them find me. And what was incredible in that journey is that I really believe that we are supported so much by spirit. If we just go like, hey, I'm available, let me let me do what I'm here to do. And people would find me in the most magical and mysterious ways. And there was always an element of even if they came to me for, so I trained as a hypnotherapist and sometimes people would come to me for, they were experiencing imposter syndrome or they wanted to quit smoking or like the most random things. But what the result of the session was is that they found a part of themselves and they reconnected with their creativity and they just like kind of shifted into this new level of awareness where they started to understand how creative they were, not just on, you know, on, on the quantum level, but really in the tangible real life, how joyful creativity became for them in the everyday. So sometimes it was, you know, actual creativity as in art. Sometimes, you know, they I worked, for example, with a, a copywriter who spent all of her time working on other people's projects. And suddenly after working with me, she was like, I have wanted to write a book for years and suddenly like in a few months I've I've written this book and that was the kind of thing that happened is people would just tap into what they had to offer and they would start creating it because they would get out of their heads they would connect to their heart they would kind of like light up their creative center and just be like suddenly like in this creative channel so I didn't necessarily work with artists originally but I found that it was always the creatives that came to me. And I honestly feel like it, you know, I think when we're working as mentors and healers, we're always working with something that connects to us. The reason that we connect with our clients is because we can see what they're going through. We understand it. And to some degree, it exists within us. We can't help someone when we can't relate to them because there's no connection points. So the clients who came to me, they were part of my healing journey just as much as I was part of theirs. And when I think back, I'm so grateful to all of the incredible humans that I worked with because they were little pieces of myself that I recognized and that I was able to connect the dots and I was able to heal parts of myself through healing them. And, and when I say healing them, it's not me doing it, right? It's just me being able to open that channel. As, as a channel, I can kind of bring in healing codes that are healing them and healing myself and so through that journey I started to pay attention to the things that I said over and over again and that's something that I recommend everyone does like if there's particular words or a particular phrase that you keep on hearing pay attention because <laughs> that's the universe trying to get your attention you're not listening so it's going to bring it to you through through a podcast or through like someone like a conversation that you overhear and some of the things that I found myself saying consistently to my clients, I, at one point I was like, oh, I need a bit of that too. And some of the things were, you know, very much like inviting people to do life on their own terms and not do something because just because you're good at it. See, that the, there are so many things that I'm good at, but just because somebody wants me to do that doesn't mean that it's necessarily the thing that brings me the most joy. 
And I had a few clients that I helped with transitioning from one career to another. And there was always that, you know, that messy part in between where you're going from one vision of yourself or one identity to a different version of you. There's that messy middle where you just, you don't know who you are. And you're like, I want to do this, but there's so much fear. Cause you're like, I don't know who that person is. I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if I have what it takes and why would I leave something that's kind of good, you know, it'd be sometimes, you know, have a, a lucrative business and a, a, you know, a great career. And they would be like, but my heart's leading me over there. And like, but it doesn't make sense. It never makes sense to the mind. So the mind's like, no, just stay on track. Like <laughs> I grew up in France and there's the French have this expression that it always comes back to me. They say, don't change a winning team. And it was always this mentality of like, if something's working, don't fuck with it. Like, don't mess around, just stay with that. But sometimes your heart's like pulling you in a different direction. And you're like, it doesn't make sense, but I just, it's this calling and this yearning. And I feel like women feel this so much more than men. Men are kind of very logical and practical. And I say men because they embody more of the masculine, right? Like we all have that within us. But as women, as as we embody more and more of our feminine and our essence, we're able to connect with that, like that heart, that pull. And I actually, at, at several times in my career, I actually, well, in my life, I had moments where I actually physically felt that pull, like something was attached deep within my heart and was pulling me in this direction. And my human was like, oh my God, but that's so scary. And it's like, you know, ah, doing this thing is like terrifying. And I was shaking, but I was like, I can't not do this because it's like my heart is pulling me it's not like a little nudge it's like a it felt like a tug of war <laughs> not that I could resist in any way but it was like this massive pull and I was like well that's my next step I have to go with it and so many of my clients would have those experiences of going from one career or like breaking down their business or leaving leaving wherever their community was and going on this you know next adventure and it was terrifying. And I would support them through that. And over and over again, I, I heard myself saying, just because you can doesn't mean you have to. And like over and over, and I was like, what am, at one point I was like, what am I doing that I don't have to do? And I feel like a lot of healers find themselves in these situations where, you know, when we have this deep yearning to be of service and to help others, we can lose ourselves in that process we can kind of be so wanting to be so much of service that we forget that the greatest service is ourselves that you know I feel like it took me quite a long time to realize that the greatest gift that I have to offer is myself and is like the the full magnificence of me and that's true for everyone right we we think that our purpose we're so told that our purpose is to be of service to others but when we understand that our serve, like our greater service is self-realization and to be exactly who we're meant to be and to move through the world fully empowered and fully expressed in our full, full magnificence, that that is the greater service, we're able to set better boundaries and say no to the things that are actually draining our energy because we know that our energy is our greatest resource. And so that requires so much courage. But then again, like courage is also a, a value of the heart. Like that's where courage comes from. So yes, there's fear, but when we move the fear out of the way, we can access so much, like we are so brave. We are able to do so much. And I think we, yeah, I think that that's all that we need to do is just be able to, take that step and continue taking that step where our heart's leading us. But for me, yeah, it, it was very much my clients who led the way for me as well. To I got to a point where I was asking myself, well, what do I really want? And that's been something that at every transition in my career, I've come to this question, like, what do I really, really, really want? And it's been... <laughs> It's been sometimes difficult to answer that. And I, what I've found is that when we don't know how to answer that question, it's because the one thing that we really, really want, we think we can't have it. And we we have accepted that we can't have it. So we can't even access what that could potentially be. 
And for me, that was always just being an artist. And so I can do, I could be a healer and I could be a mentor and I could like, there's all kinds of things that I can do that I could do. But if I really, really went deep inside, it was like, I just want to be an artist. And when I finally acknowledged that, I actually couldn't stop crying. I just cried for two weeks solid because I felt so relieved to finally have the answer to this question that had been underlying my whole life. And I really love sharing that because everyone's got their version of that. Like often when you ask someone like, if you could do anything, what would you do? So many people say, I don't know. But the truth is you do know, right? I mean, you know that, you know that cat, you know that everybody knows, like your heart's going to tell you. But sometimes we don't allow that voice to come up to the surface because, because we've kind of like blocked, we've already like locked, locked that door and forgotten that it's there. So that was very much my journey. And I'm only very new to this new phase of my life where I've gone, well, it's, I had a moment actually when my son was born, I remember starting a creative business and going, well, it's now or never. And then that business ended up being a business that was run based on what the market, what I could make money from, what the market wanted. I loved it, but it wasn't what I really deeply wanted. I learned a lot, but then there was a different phase where it's like, okay, now you get another chance to choose you. And I did that so many times. It's actually embarrassing. <laughs> but when I got to the point where I was like, actually, actually now it's like, what's the worst thing that could happen? And I was like, well, actually, I, I don't see that there is any, there's no downside to taking a chance on the one thing that your heart yearns for. But it, it took me a very long time to come to this point where it was like, I actually have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Um, so yeah, here I am. <laughs> I think a lot of the listeners are going to be so inspired by by your story. And again, I'd like to highlight courage, the quality of the heart that really, and that deep honesty with yourself, just like digging deeper and deeper and being like, no, this is not it. No, this is not it. And there are a couple of things I wanted to touch on there. First of all, you you and I connected because we had very similar stories of children being born, starting these creative businesses. And I too fell into the same trap of, I was creating what my soul felt felt needed to be created, what, what wanted to be birthed through me. But at some point it was creating for the market. At some point it was being somebody telling you, well, we need this like kind of Disney themed. Oh, we need this. That is because it was children's products. And um, it was saying no and choosing different path, but just getting exhausted of having having to do that and never quite feeling like this is it. And when you were talking about having that realization that this is not it, I know a lot of people are nodding to this as well, because we all, when you live a heart-led, heart-powered, heart-centered life, you do recognize those moments when your heart is like, knock, knock, it is time. And you're like, I am not in, in what I'm supposed to be doing. And I have a memory of this is like 20, gosh, like, yeah, exactly 20 years ago, probably where I was sitting on the bed of my apartment coming home from working in the in this giant advertising agency, I was working in a dream job for a lot of a lot of my friends, but I was miserable. And I remember telling my husband and boyfriend, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. And him saying, oh, it's like this privileged thing to be able to say that, you know, and like, no, like, who do you think you are for? Not in a mean way, but in a very conditioned way saying that. And me being at that moment, yeah, okay, maybe this is not the time. I'll keep it in the back of, back of my mind, kind of push it back there but I knew this wasn't what I was meant to do. And for me, the self-expression always was at the forefront of it as for you and also service, because in some ways I felt that through service, I was going to be able to find 
myself and reconnect to myself, which I feel it is um, a container that does allow for, for that for a lot of us. And as you mentioned, as healers, mentors, guides, coaches, we see our clients as mirrors reflecting light, refl reflecting truth back to us. And that's how a lot of a lot of us find our true, true path through through this navigation of working with them and seeing them as our teachers, seeing them as our guides. And again, like that saying, we're all just walking each other home. Like ultimately yeah. we cross paths with our clients because uh, there is something for them and for us. And, and the last thing I wanted to say, the, the people who feel, because I know there are some listeners out there, I could, I could really feel you right now, who are sitting there going, I'm one of those people, I'm one of those people you're talking about, that when you ask me what it is I want, I don't have an answer. And I'm going to say, I don't know. And it's because life has not given me a chance to be with myself. I've been in this rat race. I've been in this autopilot. I've been in survival mode. So for someone like that, what advice can we give them? When you are, when you feel you can't leave the job or whatever the situation is, what ways is there, is there anything that you have recommended to your clients to reconnecting to the heart, reconnecting to the self, simple things, going deeper, yes. but, but slowly and gently maybe, because some of these people are in a very vulnerable state of defenses strong defenses of the mind not allowing the heart to speak yeah and I think that like you were saying your your partner saying like it's it's a privilege it absolutely is a privilege to have to be able to ask ourselves these questions but I think it was was it the Dalai Lama who said that the western woman will save the world yeah so there's this quote yes like, I don't Yes. That the Western woman will yes. save the world because of, like, I feel like the Western woman is the one who is privileged, who is actually going to understand her privilege and change things and open doors for others to act as well. Because when we stop playing into this rat race, like this strange way that we've been running society that is killing people, like it's killing people physically, mentally, emotionally, we're we're all burning out the rates of depression and anxiety like there's something very much wrong with this way of doing things the only way that we're going to change that is by refusing to play the game and so yes that is a privilege that is a huge privilege but I think it's one that we owe to all of those who don't have that privilege so one of the ways that I recommend doing this and I think it is a very strong point to to make that when we feel vulnerable it is something to soften into I'm not one of those coaches who will tell people to like well just quit the job and like take a leap of faith because the universe will catch you it's like if you don't believe that's possible and when you start out on this journey you don't know what is possible you don't realize how capable and how powerful you are yet and so you will get in your own way so the first step is to carve out time to get to know yourself. And that's possibly one of the most terrifying things I ever did. I avoided it for many years. I remember intuitively, I, I used to live in, well, I grew up in Europe. And when I moved to Australia, I felt so light. And one of the first things that I, like intuitively, I could feel my intuition telling me like go to the beach and sit there and meditate and I was like I have no idea how to meditate and I, I did it a couple for a couple of days I think I did it for three days in a row and I sat there on the beach and it was so uncomfortable to just be and not do anything that I was like ah no 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 not gonna do it and when I really burnt out I actually went back to that I was like well that's the practice that intuitively I knew would was the thing to do and I had to I had to really go up against all of my fears and my insecurities and all of my stories in my head that I couldn't, that it was hard that, you know, and just really be in stillness. And I think that's one of the most courageous things that we can do is to pause and to just face ourselves in that pause and that stillness. Most people don't do it. 
they'll have time out and they'll they'll listen to a podcast or they'll watch TV or they'll scroll social media. They're constantly asking for somebody else's, I guess, like they're, they're trying to connect with the world because they're not connected to themselves. And so it's just like this vicious cycle, right? We go around chasing our own tails. But sitting with ourselves is so uncomfortable that it's so much easier to pick up your phone or to listen to something or to, you know. So I think that is the first step, even if it's just a few minutes at a time, reconnecting, like doing the most simple things, like reconnecting to the breath and just spending time in solitude and in stillness because the most impactful and the most transformational work happens there. It doesn't happen when we're doing something, when we're going, you know, when we're seeking out some transformational experience. I feel like the most transformational moments are actually the moments that we connect with ourselves. And it can be by doing something as simple as, you know, folding your laundry, but doing it by like feeling into your heart, feeling into your body, being present with it and not trying to escape yourself constantly. And I don't think that there's any rushing that phase. A lot of people, they're really stuck in their pain. So they want to get to the other side of it, but you need to walk through the deep tide. You can't, you know, you can't propel yourself there because if you propel yourself there, you haven't learned what you needed to learn on the journey. And you'll eventually, you'll cycle back because you need to, it's a slow integration. And I think that's the most kind way for ourselves and to everybody else to actually just take it one step at a time. And it doesn't matter. Like I hear from a lot of people, like it's it's too late or I should have done this like in my 20s or in my 30s or 40s or 50s or whatever, whatever phases in the past where we feel like we're late. And I remember at the beginning of my journey feeling that I was late to my own party and I was like, this life is waiting for me to really step into my purpose. And I'm like, I, I should have, should have done this years ago, blah, 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 all these stories. It's like, it doesn't matter. Like you can accelerate your journey just with the power of vulnerability and intention and willingness. But that that does take a lot of courage. Like we want to do something and we want to find the answers, but ultimately we need to just allow those answers to reveal themselves. And I know that sounds super ethereal. And if I were listening to myself a few years ago, I'd be like, ah, just give me the answer. <laughs> But it is very much, I think the the journey is to realize that we actually do have all those answers and they're sitting there waiting for us to learn how to listen. And we can't learn how to listen until we just make space for it. So, make space for it. That's yeah, highlight it that. Make space for it. Yeah. Space for, for the shift to happen as as you give yourself that space not on your timeline thing, right? not on like yeah it's not on a human timeline but also I feel like in this this journey of accessing our our essence we go we're like we're collaborating with all of life and I think that Spirit in so many ways really has our back in the sense that you will never be given more than you can handle. And so if there is no space in your life to actually be with yourself and face face your fears and face your insecurities and come out on the other side, you, you won't be given the opportunity to do that. Like you need to make space first so that you actually have the capacity for that. And so when people are just, you know, not making space to tap into their potential, they'll actually never access that potential because they don't have capacity. It's like, well, the world's not going to try and like punish you into your transformation. It's it's a it's a gift that is available to you, but you've got to choose it as well. And I was hearing just now when you were talking, make space and empty, empty so that you can be filled with the yeah. truth with love, with divine will. So mm -hmm. if you're listening to this and if you're driving, for example, or you're folding laundry or doing dishes, maybe this is the call to pause us <laughs> and take five minutes to go 
to go within and to listen to what wants to come through. And I'd just like to add that this is, I know this really, really well. That was part of my journey of, I'm going to listen to the podcast. I'm going to read this book. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm, and not allowing for the quiet. And there are times even now I catch myself driving home from the grocery store and I pick up my phone to record that voice memo to someone that I need. And it's like, no, actually, this is the time. This is the time to stop. And a lot of the time when we're driving, when we're in the shower, when things start coming through, right? When even if you don't, don't consider yourself super intuitive, that's when you will begin to receive some insights or downloads or some ideas or images because your mind is, is getting cleared and focusing yeah. on, you know, doing something else like driving and is all those things are able to, to happen and, and, and come in. And there was what a lot of people don't understand is that we have access to lots of different brain waves but we don't take advantage of them. And so as a hypnotherapist, this is something that I've taught people to access, like through meditation, through hypnosis, we actually access a different range of brain waves. And, you know, you can look at it from a very scientific perspective and go like, everyone's got a brain. Everyone has this brain that functions in a particular way, but it's like we've just switched on autopilot and we don't know how to get out of it. And so when we take time to pause and to slow down, what we're doing is we're training our brain to access a different brainwave. And so it's something that we do through meditation, through breath, through presence. There's so many different ways to do it. And everyone has ways that work for them. But when we can access these different brainwaves, we're accessing different levels of consciousness. That's basically what it is. So instead of being, sometimes we don't know. We don't know the answer to something. So we're stuck in this kind of like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But then when you actually relax and you're, so you're no longer stuck in that, that part of your brain that's trying to solve a problem, you tap into a more creative aspect where it's like, you're not, you're not attached to having the right answer. You're actually just playing with possibility and potential. That's when you're able to access a higher consciousness that can actually come and bring you different ideas and different possibilities and you know it's a it's again it's that collaboration with the universe it's like well you can't access it when you're stuck in that beta brainwave it's just not possible it's like when you're in that brainwave it's like you've shut all the doors and all the windows and you're stuck in there going I can't find my way out well first of all you've got to unlock the doors and then you've got to open the blinds then you've got to like then open the windows allow some light in and then realize that you can actually climb through the window or you can go through any of the doors that are there. But that's how we learn to play with that inner world. And we don't know what we don't know. And working with the subconscious, I love helping people understand, well, what beliefs do you have and how are they keeping you stuck in this box? Because, for example, if someone is, I hear a lot from my clients, like, well, I can't, I can't. They decided at some point that they couldn't. So, for example, it's, you know, maybe they, they're in a toxic relationship and they think, well, I can't leave. It's like, well, can't you? No, because maybe that was never modeled for you. Maybe you were never shown what that looks like. Maybe the absolute opposite is what is, you know, culturally or general in your, you know, your gen generational line, it's always been a particular pattern. But it's like, well, just because no one's done it before doesn't mean that it's impossible. But if you believe that you can't, then, well, you're not going to even try. But if you believe that you can, then suddenly you open up to, well, how would I do that? If I were to, if I were to actually entertain this new, this new dream or this new way of living what would that actually look like? And we open up to start creating what that looks like rather than just being stuck in like it's not an option. And so everyone has their version of that in so many different areas of life. So sometimes what I always recommend for people is like rather than trying to find the answer to the question, make space within yourself so that you're getting rid of all the reasons why you can't in the first place. Because then you find that, 
it becomes quite effortless. I often talk to people and they say that they don't know the answer to these questions. But when you actually just sit with it for a little while, well, suddenly the answer comes to them and it comes to them effortlessly and they feel like, oh, I always knew that. And it was right there. It was just just a little bit out of reach. And that's how we like we really block ourselves. We do it to ourselves. And in a way, that's really empowering because if if you did it, you can undo it. You know how you were saying <laughs> that there is a phrase that you repeat to your clients and it's actually the thing for you that you needed to hear. The last mm. this last week, my phrase has been, you need to get out of your own way. <laughs> you need to That's get out of your my own way. Line. <laughs> what? It used to be on my business cards. Oh, that's um, funny. I that's... help to get out of your own way. Yeah, and it's and that's what I've been I've been saying, and I've been also saying it, then repeating it to myself. It's like, how are you? How are all these ideas of the things you should do and you need to, and all these things, all these ideas about how much time you have or you don't have? Get out of your own way. Just get out of your your own way, and it's when you were talking about the reprogramming this the subconscious and the beliefs and all of that I think what we don't when we when you look at it from the zoomed out perspective and kind of see the the timeline as it progresses of someone going through this work the interesting thing for a lot of us on the spiritual path on this consciously participating in this personal and collective evolution is that a lot of the time when we break free from these big things like a toxic relationship or whatever whatever the the big thing is that's the thing we can then speak to and guide others and empower others to walk through as well because they're all patterns and all these lumps that exist on this spiral path that we are here clearing so i think it's and i think it's beautiful how the the path unfolds a little differently for each one of us and we take new nuggets that we can then guide and facilitate each other's transformation and return to self return to freedom when you were saying inner peace earlier it is the underlying thing for a lot of people but a lot of people will say I don't know why but for me that word is freedom like I really want to feel free expansive like I can finally breathe like my heart is expanded and that's I feel I feel that that's that's something that so many of us are returning to and starting to claim and circling back to the Dalai Lama quote and the, that privilege of of being able to use what we were given in this lifetime because we have as multidimensional beings with all of the all of the lifetimes it's all coming back to this particular spot for this particular time in this incarnation in this body in this person in this in this everything that we are right being able to take what we have and the experiences that we had in this lifetime and across all time and space and what are we going to do with it for ourselves and for the collective knowing that whatever we do as part of our service path is also part of our greatest service to ourselves, to our souls, like to the essence that is tied to us. It is going to be at the, on that last day when we're like, okay, I'm transitioning, I'm done, looking back and being like, yes, yes. <laughs> like that was the life that was the culmination of all lifetimes that was it and that's like that's the the essence that I always connect to like what does that mean today like what what does that mean in this moment what makes me feel that way like yes today I really lived today I felt so yeah I think there's, I don't know if you're aware of this book where you are, but it's it's grown in popularity here in Australia that it was written by a nurse, I believe, who treated terminal patients. And she wrote this book that's called something along the lines of the, the top five regrets of the dying. And the number one 
was that they lived a life according to what somebody else wanted them to do. They didn't live life on their own terms. And I think that's like literally the opposite of freedom, right? When we don't realize that we are actually free to make up our own rules and we allow other people to dictate that for us. I think that in some ways, like when we look at it, that's ultimately that's self-abandonment. It's like not even trying to do life on your own time and just telling yourself that that's not possible. And I think at the end of life, when people look back, they're like, oh, they can see those moments in time where they actually did have a choice. They didn't perceive that they had a choice in that moment, but they really did. And I think that for me, I would rather fail miserably over and over again than not even try than to think, well, you know, and I think for so much of my life, it's been like, well, I don't really know what I want. So I don't know where to pour all of my energy. But when you do know, when you know that what you want is freedom, or you want to be happy, or you want to be respected, or you want to feel worthy, or whatever it is that you want to feel, if you don't even try, well, I don't know what the hell you're doing with your life. Like, isn't that, like, when we look back on all of the potential and every single day, it's like, we don't have to get it perfect every day, but at least try, advocate for life, advocate for yourself or that part of you that actually believes that you can have an extraordinary life. And that looks completely different from one person to another, but you have to at least try. I think the underlying thing is fear of disappointing someone, disappointing a parent or fear of judgment or fear of rejection or fear. It's always fear, right? And the antidote for that a lot of the time is the courage of the heart. <laughs> it's, yeah. um, it's like, well, honestly, like, come back to that. the only person that you will ever be with for the rest of your life is yourself. yourself. Yes. And yes. I think like that, yeah, fear of disappointing a parent. All they like, want so... for you is for you to be happy, like truly. Yeah. And uh, like if they if they peel off all of their own conditioning, all they want for you is for you to be happy and and to live that, to be safe, but to live a, a, li a full life, whatever that means to you. And I love that you said that because that's that's different for every one of us. Yeah, and I think like not everyone's experience is the same. And I've I I have had some clients who have had to pull away from really toxic patterns within their families. And that is excruciating. And that is, I think, one of the bravest things that we can possibly do because we're not just healing ourselves or choosing ourselves. We're we're showing up for our whole lineage. And that is a really deep level of healing that we we are able to take on that we don't have to but we have the option to take on at any point in our lives and I do think that sometimes we in the long run parents always do like deep down want the best for us but sometimes we'll be operating on a pattern of you know a particular behavior that was it's an old subconscious program from when we were like seven years old. And what I feel like and what I've noticed a lot of people don't understand is that maybe your parent told you that and believed that when you were seven years old, but that was maybe 20, 30 years ago. You've evolved, they have evolved, but that belief system is still stuck inside of you. And if we don't take time to you know, to declutter all those old beliefs and those old ways of doing things. We never realize how far we have come, not just in ourselves, but as a family, as a, as a society, that there are so many things that are still true for us deep down that are absolutely like that people will challenge me. They're like, no, I don't believe that. And you're like, well, <laughs> let's pull it apart. And they will reveal that their deep core seated belief is something that their conscious mind and their like analytical mind doesn't even choose in this moment. And so that's where, you know, I think it, it is really valuable to go really deep and get to know ourselves and have the courage to actually, you know, look at the, the darker parts of ourselves that 
they don't belong to us. They're not who we really are, but they're often the way that we show up. And that's not a bad thing. It just means that it needs a little bit of awareness and a little patience and a bit of compassion. Awareness, compassion, and choosing from a wiser observer self when it comes up because it it does come up we clear it and it might come up at a later point with a much much greater thing yeah we are constantly 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 being pulled back to living with that full awareness and full seeing what is the truth of who I am versus all of the all of the things that have been compounded and that make me who I think I am right oh the human experience the human the human experience isn't it fun ah it is great hey if there was no human experience we would not get to see a beautiful vibrational art that my eye keeps um, coming back to the beautiful piece behind you. So I really wanted to ask you about back to the creation and creation of frequency and vibration into being in the physical and what it means to you now and where you see this going for you and for mm -hmm. the collective. Like what is, why is this coming back now? Because we've always, we've always had this, right? But why is it really coming into awareness now? Well, I feel like for me, the reason, well, just taking it back to the beginning, I started creating these because I could see them in my mind. I didn't know exactly what it was or how I would even make it, but it was like something that I could see and that I could feel. And originally I started making these textile installations because I was running events and I've got a background in interior design. So interiors are really, really important to me. Physical spaces are really important I did a lot of study around, you know, human behavior and psychology of space and how we interact differently with one another, depending on the space that we're in and how the space is, you know, there's colors, there's textures, there's all kinds of symbols that interact with our subconscious mind without us being aware of it. But the space that we're in can massively transform the way we interact and the way we feel. And so that was always something that was in my awareness. But I started creating these because I wanted a backdrop for my events. I would go from, to different venues and I wanted something that would create a vibe that wasn't necessarily like the full hippie vibe, but would detract from a very like kind of corporate vibe and to create something that was my own. And I actually became aware of the power that this had when people actually told me that it made them feel safe. It made them feel warm. They just kind of like, it felt like a warm hug and they just kind of wanted to move in towards it. And they would say, and I heard, and this was something that I heard over and over again, they said, it makes me feel like home. And initially I was like, oh, it's like, you know, the home, like the safe place. And then I realized that what I feel people were actually saying is it made them feel at home within themselves. It brought them into a feeling of feeling, feeling safe and having the courage to be authentic and to really speak their truth. And so I got really curious about how I could work with this. And so as a healer and as a shaman, I was like, well, okay, well, how do we, how do we actually create an energy field so that when people are in contact with this particular artwork, they can actually, their energy can become coherent. They can actually drop out of their heads effortlessly. They can access their hearts. They can feel at ease. They're able to be clear on what it is that they want. They're able to connect with their intuition. Everything becomes more effortless because they're not stuck in, you know, this distorted energy that they've been walking around in outside and maybe in a corporate space or in a very industrial dominated space it's just it creates this sacred space where they can just be and they're able to access that within themselves so it's kind of like this portal that gives you access to your own authenticity and your own wisdom 
And what I what I truly believe is that artwork has the ability to connect with people straight to the heart, like beyond the mind. You don't need to understand artwork for it to still have an effect on your energy. So if something is created very intentionally to reach into your heart and to remind you of who you are, of what your power is, and to really like truly see you, honor you and hold space for you, then we can create this on kind of on a mass scale for people who don't necessarily seek to go to therapy and do the inner work. You know, there's so many people out there in the world who have incredible purposes, but they've never been given the tools. They've never been given the awareness. They just don't know. But when those people go through something that suddenly cracks them open or they they have an experience that opens up their heart, it it changes them. It changes the way they interact. It changes the decisions they make. It changes how they speak and interact with their loved ones. It just helps them remember that they're more than their identity in this moment. And I really believe that vibrational art can be used as like medicine, like like a portal for people to access their own hearts without necessarily, you know, I, I work as a speaker, so I do a lot of talks where I explain the different bodies to people. I explain how the subconscious works. I talk about lots of different things, but I'm still speaking to their mind. But what I do because I'm a healer is through my talks with my energy, I'm connecting them to their heart. And they may not realize it's not about what I say. It's about how I connect to their heart and they just, they feel something, but then they get to take that feeling. They take get to take that awareness and get curious and follow that. And that's their choice from that point. It's not up to me to tell them what to do. It's just my, my purpose to ignite that and to give them that thread and they get to follow it if that's in alignment for them, if they choose to. And so I feel like these artworks are a living embodiment of that intention for people to come in contact with it and to just feel something and be reminded of something on a deep level that then I'm just really curious to see what people do with that. Like we've all had this experience of, I mean, I remember when I was about 15 going to a museum with my high school and there was someone talking about this classical piece in one of the rooms and I was like, ugh, boring. But I remember in the corner of my eye in another room and going to, and it felt like it was pulling me inwards. And to this day, I still remember this artwork and I've actually retraced it. I found it was a surrealist French artist. He's passed away now, but his daughter, I got in contact with her and I'm trying to get a copy of this artwork, but she yeah, I remember in that moment, like seeing the artwork and feeling like it was pulling me towards it. And it there was just this, I can't explain it. It didn't make sense to my mind, but it's something that I felt. And I don't need to overanalyze and intellectualize it. I know that it transformed something within me. And that's what that's what I want to gift people is just to connect them to their hearts and then they get to choose what they do with that. So that's what I believe the power of vibrational art has, that it just, it goes straight to the heart. It doesn't go through the mind. It doesn't explain itself. It just goes boom. So if someone is listening to this and being like, this is exactly what I feel I'm called to do, what is the advice you would give them as far as more consciously connecting during their creative practice or before they even begin what would you what would you recommend for somebody to invite that essence invite that field for creation of this piece to create mm -hmm. the right atmosphere to create the right frequency to create the right conditions for this piece to be made if someone is interested with experimenting with this work um, don't think your way through it. It has to be a feeling state. And what I recommend is imagining that you're breathing with your heart and you're breathing in. So you're not thinking about your mind. Often when people try and focus their energy, they're very much in their heads and they're trying to connect with their third eye. It's just leave that out of the picture. Just go straight to your heart. 
and breathe in through your heart and just see what comes up. It's quite incredible. Every time that I've done this, you know, sometimes we think that we need to do a whole ritual or we need to go through this really deep, deep experience to get an answer. But what I found is that if you really come from a place of integrity and you, you tune in with yourself and you just ask your heart, just ask it a really straightforward, simple question, the answer will come immediately. And you'll probably, then your mind will probably jump in and tell you all the reasons why that wasn't even a thing and that didn't really happen. And like, that was a whisper and you made it up, but you'll know, like your heart will tell you immediately. You just need to ask the right question. And so when it comes to creativity, it's exactly the same thing. Breathe in through your heart and just listen and ask and, and then play. Like it's not something that, you know, true art is not something that we think our way through. It's a process of playful creativity. And as you were talking, I was seeing, yes, yeah, 100%. As you were talking, I was seeing someone like making a beautiful flower arrangement or making a beautiful acai ball, you know, creating art with a cocoa nibs and like the like just really playing bringing that playfulness and creativity as in your own definition into everything we do because that ultimately for a lot of us is the pathway to connecting to the heart to our true essence and as we're able to do that more ways to do that are revealed so a lot of people don't realize that you, the palms of your hands, your hands are directly connected to your heart center. And so when we talk about things like, you know, handmade, like the reason that something handmade is so valuable is because it's made with love. And when we cook, when we hold people, when we do all these things, they're done with love because we're using our hands. Like there's this like direct connection point. And so often when people try to connect with their hearts, if they're doing it from that space of like meditation, they're often like they're listening, they're thinking, they're engaging the, the mind. And you know what? I love the mind. I think it's so beautiful. I've spent so much time like getting to know the mind and getting to know its incredible power. But it's also, it's also very limited. I often tell my clients like your mind's brilliant, but it's the dumbest part of you. So when we use our hands and we create with our hands it doesn't matter what we're creating we're directly connecting to our hearts and so sometimes that is sometimes the easiest way if we're someone who needs to do something then do something with your hands and don't think your way through it don't like follow a recipe but just start creating start playing with your hands and that will I guess it'll trick your energy system to connect to your heart and I think the more that we become comfortable with that and the more we practice it, the easier it becomes to actually just live in that way in real life. Um, so that's a really, really interesting tip for people to get started. But I think it's really important for people to understand that if you are already creating with your hands, there is so much of your own heart power that goes into what you're creating and I think that it's very important for artists to start understanding this and start to understand the power of their work and the power that they have to create this. And I think that that's something that needs to really come from, well, it can't not come from the heart, but when we create something that is, it's our own medicine that we channel into a particular artwork it's not about us and it's not about how it's received. It's just about becoming the creator that we're, we're here to be. And that can be through, you know, the way we make food for our family, or it can be the way exactly like you said, like arranging flowers, something that can be so incredibly beautiful. And that is such a reminder of how everything is just nothing's permanent right when you have cut flowers they're not going to last forever but you can make them look so amazing and it can bring you so much joy for that little period of time that you have access to them and I think that teaches us over time to be able to let go of things when they're when they're past their time just let go of it return it to the earth 
and then get some new fresh flowers, you know, and just continue that cycle. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So how can someone work with you now and where can they find you? They can find me on my website. So that's shahigginson.com. Or on, I'm on most of the socials. Different ways to work with me is I do corporate keynotes so I can come into organizations and talk about these different themes. I also create these for venues and for spaces where people are want to be intentional about connecting to the heart through artwork. And I do also have some opportunities to work with me in a private mentorship. I... It's one of my favorite ways of working with people like because everyone's so unique and so individual. I don't really run that many group things at the moment. I really want to go really deep, but really intimately with individuals. So I have a, a few spots that open up here and there to, to work privately with clients, but I, I work more with groups through my voice and my creative expression. So through through. And all of these are linked in the show notes. So they are, they are there. Oh my gosh, this conversation was just like bomb for my heart. And I'm sure all the listeners um, can agree, can agree on this. Thank you so much for, for being here. Thank you so much for inspiring us. Thank you for sharing your beautiful Thank you. wisdom. Thank you for saying yes to this path of vibrational art and where it may it may lead you and as you guide others because I, I truly feel that your part of your path is inspiring others to do that who don't even recognize that they are artists that they are creators to bring mm -hmm. this through because that's when you were describing about the way that the your piece your pieces make others feel that's exactly what we need to bypass the head and go to the body, go to the heart. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so much. I feel like my heart is just so, so full and so expanded. And it was so lovely to connect with you. Not, not in person, but I feel like we're kind of in the, in the same room right now. Yeah. And I feel like I got the benefit of, of receiving your frequency from the, from the art behind you. So Thank you. Thank you again. And thank you for, for listening.